There's a new glitch in College Football 25 that lets you run commit on every single play without any of the penalties involved in run committing. So if you guys want to learn how to use this defense, and more importantly, if you guys want me to show you how to beat this defense with a route that will score against it every single time, stick around after the intro. If you guys are looking for fast, cheap, reliable coins for your College Football 25 team, check out my coin sponsors at MMOXP and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The champ is here! Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Slim out the college football cheese as always. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys a brand new glitch that's going around the community that allows you to run commit from a very specific defense in every single play of the game without any of the penalties that come with run committing. Uh, but before I do, as always, if you guys want to see more videos like this, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. If you need more help or more money plays, you can download any of my ebooks instantly. Simply by clicking the links in the description or the top pinned comment. Now I'm going to show it out of the 3-3 double mug mid blitz zero because this is probably the meta defense and the one that you'll see this the most from. I also recently put out a full breakdown of this defense so if you guys want to learn how to do more from this. I have links in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video so stick around for that. But the truth is you can do this out of any man zero blitz in the game. If your opponent steps their size up a little bit, comes out like a three tight end set or something to run the ball a lot, you can match it in like a, a three four odd pinch buck zero. If they're coming out in something really light and they're passing a lot, but they're still running inside zones from time to time, you can do it from the three two six odd, also known as the dollar, it would be like a zero blitz. So it's really up to you. So we're gonna go out, we're gonna pick cover zero, but I'm gonna first gonna show you guys uh, what happens if you don't use this glitch. So let's go ahead and let's pick uh, the mesh uh, double wheel real quick. So on this play here, you can see how everybody on the field is either in a man or a, or a rush. So basically all the rushers and all the man defenders will not react when it comes to run committing. Now, if I go to a zone, you'll get an idea. If I hit RB or R1 and down the right stick, you'll get an idea of what a zone run commit looks like if you've never done this. I know we have a lot of people that are new to the game, but if I run commit, you can see just about every cornerback, safety, everybody drops down to basically attack the run before realizing that, oh, it's not a run, and then they'll eventually get back. Once their play recognition kicks in, they'll eventually get back and they'll, they'll, they'll go back to what they're supposed to do. But you can see at that point, a simple streak could have been gone here as this guy got over the safety, which is never really supposed to happen. So this is obviously very dangerous to run commit at the wrong time. But if you're in a man coverage or especially a man zero blitz, you'll see that you can run commit every single time. And even if it's a pass play, like I selected here, which we're going to see, it's not, they're not going to run commit because like I said, man defenders are not programmed to run commit. As you can see right here, we're going to get what's probably going to be a catch and run touchdown because drags are a pretty good concept when it comes to this defense. So you can see right there, nobody ran commit. Everybody just stayed in their lanes. Go to the replay real quick just to show you guys that. And this might be programmed like this because obviously they're uh, they're not looking into the backfield. They're not covering a zone. They're, they're covering a receiver. So this might be why they programmed it this way. But you can see how everybody did their job. Nobody uh, went after the quarterback or the running back like I did in the previous play. And to illustrate this, more, this even better, if I go to a cover one hole, which is a mix of man and a mix of zone, you'll see if I run commit again, you'll see that the zone defender in the middle of the field and the three-rack hook will be the only ones that will blow their assignment and go after the, after the running back. So you can see right here, that single high safety runs all the way down. He's not covering middle, and you can see how easily the running back gets open. Obviously, I think I was supposed to cover him too, so I'm not really worried about the result here. So that's basically the glitch. If you if you're in if you have anybody in the zone and you run commit, they're going to react, but man coverage defenders will not. So that basically allows you to run commit every single play in a man zero blitz with no downside. So you know if I run this play like this one more time and I run commit, it's something that I can basically just get away with all game, and my opponent will never be allowed to run. But let's see what happens if they actually run the ball. So we're going to pick that play again. We'll pick the inside zone. And like I said, we noticed that I've been run committing this entire time with no issues as far as uh, pass defense. So let's go and let's run commit. And let's see against what happens against a run play. You're going to see how these safeties and everybody's just going to crash in and just destroy the running back for a loss. And that's going to be what you're going to get every single time. So if you go against somebody using this, they're pretty much going to make you a one-dimensional player, which isn't the worst thing because Manzio Blitz is easier to pass against anyway, and it's not necessarily the best pass defense, as you saw earlier. I think I might have gave up a one-play touchdown or two uh, while just showing this off. But obviously, a lot of people like to run the ball. So this is, number one, the best run defense in the game automatically based off the fact that it run commits with no penalty. 
but what are you going to do if you want to pass against this? Now, the route that I'm going to show you guys should be pretty common. You should be able to find it in any playbook that has the tray open offset or really a lot of different tray formations because this is really just a specific slot fade uh, route that I'm going to be looking for. I also just want to make sure that I put my fastest receiver in this spot here, but I think the guy that I have running it's actually pretty good. So make sure he's in the slot position because like I said, I'm looking for a slot fade concept. I'm just looking for one that has the ability to custom stem the slot fade. So you can see on this play here, the shock H option, that's going to be a play that I use. You should be able to find this, like I said, in a lot of different playbooks. I'm not going to be in every single one, but any route that runs the slot fade that the shock H option has should be fine. So let's go ahead and let's pick that. On defense, we'll continue to focus on mid blitz zero. You're going to want to run this from a hash mark to the open side of the field like I am here because this is going to give you the most opportunity to the outside. Now, as far as your blocking structure, you're going to want to block your running back, but you have the choice of just putting him on a regular pass block if you're more comfortable with that. This will allow the defender covering him, though, to cover the middle of the field, which is not going to be a problem because I'm throwing outside anyway. But let's say you want to try to put yourself a check down with a slant or something like that. In this scenario, you're going to want to put the running back on a block and release that will be better as he will uh, hold the defender in place that's covering him. And then you're also going to want to do a full slide, however you want to do it. You want to slide to the point where you can pick up this protection. So that's basically, he's in a check and release, which typically goes out into the flats, which is why the defender will block, will cover him the entire time. But he will also, it basically is the best of both worlds to do it this way. So this round its own, the, the slot fade, the, R, the route that on RB does not beat this defense by itself. As you can see right here, he does a decent job, but the defender's there. So we have to alter this route. And to alter this route so that he can get around him is simply to put him on a custom stem where he breaks at about 10 yards. If I do this, and I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll, I'll do my blocking structure setup one more time. But if I do this, now he's going to run closer to that defender to the point that when he breaks outside, he's going to get away every single time, although I didn't get a very good throw. But you can see how we still dot that up on the sideline. Very big difference when it comes to the first play as the first time he blasted him because he didn't get past him. But when I do it this time, you can see how he gets close to the point where the defender doesn't react. He turns and runs with him, but he doesn't do take the same angles. That's why when I turn away, I'm getting away every single time. Now, I'm not quite getting going, so I can extend this route even more. It's 10 yards is the minimum. But if I move it up to 15, it actually works a little bit better because he will actually get behind the DB before he makes that turn. So now I'm going to go ahead and do it one more time with a 15-yard separation. And you can see how we actually get over top of him a little bit better. And we get an easier one-play touchdown. The reason I was using 10 yards before is because I just feel like the pressure, even with the blocking running back, you can still see that the pressure uh, can get in. As you can see what I see right here. He's still picking that up, but it's not like the longest hold, which is why I prefer a 10-yard break. But you could always do the 15, as you can see. He's running with it like it's a streak, stride for stride, even though he's kind of in front of him, to the point that when he pulls away, because he's got outside leverage, he's going to get open every single time. It's really that easy. And the guy that's covering the running back, or that's supposed to be covering the running back, because I just put him in the regular pass block, he's on the wrong side of the field, so it really doesn't matter if he's in a, a mid-deep like he is here anyway. So like I said, if I, if I want to extend that to 15, it's going to be a more effective catch and run play. You just got to know that you don't have as much time when it comes to actually uh, holding on to the ball. And then you can see I'm actually getting a little bit more one play touchdown. So instead of 10, it's definitely better to put it to 15. So I'm going to end the video there. If you guys want to see more tip videos like this in the future, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. I have other tip videos like this, especially a tip about this defense popping up on screen. So if you want to see that, just click the links. And until next time, thanks for watching. Remember my shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.